All right, well, we have the LS3 Miata in the shop today for some much needed maintenance. A very exciting upgrade ahead of this weekend's Clutch Kickers competition. It's gonna be round three. We always gotta be on our end game with this car. When you start pushing these cars to this level, running super grippy, semi-slick tires, running, you know, making 500 horsepower to the wheels and battling in competition, you just gotta stay on top of the maintenance. You can't slack on it. So, you know, we always check over the car between rounds and go through things, and both of my front wheel bearings were shot. This one has been shot for quite a while. But we got some fresh knuckles on there, some nice fresh wheel bearings, that's all sorted. Got new inner tie rods, cause those are a little bent, got the car realigned. So we've already knocked out most of the maintenance stuff. We do have a little fab project to do, but the biggest thing is the most exciting thing for me. It, sh it should be life changing. I am not lying when I tell you, this is probably the most excited I've ever been about a car part. And that's saying something, because I've built quite a few cars now, got a lot of cool parts. This one tops the charts for me. I'm hoping it lives up to expectations. Should be a total game changer. All right, before we get too deep into today's video, I want to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, Cove Audio. So when you guys aren't around, I can listen to music freely without worrying about copyright claims, and I love to listen to it out loud because it's nice. I enjoy it. But when you're here, I can't really do that. But when you're not here, I can, and I use this Cove speaker. I absolutely love this thing. I've had it for a long time now, and it is kicking it just like the day I got it. Super clear audio, it goes super loud, which is important, especially in an open shop, but a shop at all, there's lots of noises, compressors, tools, you make noise. Uh, but my favorite thing by far, it splits in half. And this is a more handy feature than you would think until you start using it and find all these reasons to split it in half. So when we were doing the front knuckles, I put one over here on this lift arm and one over here on this lift arm. So now when I'm bouncing back and forth from one side to the other, I've got music on both sides. It works from 30 feet away, so I can just keep my phone in my pocket and no matter where I am in the shop, the music keeps playing. So handy. So handy. So if you're interested in getting one for yourself, they're offering over 67% off if you use my code TR67, um, and that's good through to about the end of the month. So if you're interested in getting one, I'll put the link down in the description, and huge thank you to Cove for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. Let me show you this fun, exciting thing I've been talking about. Probably gonna be easiest to pull this thing off the lift for the first part of this. So obviously, being in Florida, it gets pretty hot at events. And I mean, it's rough in the car. Obviously the temperature in the car gets hotter than the temperature outside, but it comps. Sometimes our practice sessions are like two hours long. And at competitions, you've got a lot of joggers all trying to get as much seat time as they can because it's a serious competition and you really don't have that much time allotted for practice because there's so much that goes on in a competition weekend. So you need to get every lap in you can. So what that means is you might end up sitting in the car for two hours straight to get as many runs as you can during that session. And let me tell you, two hours in a hot car, pretty rough. You know, it gets to a point where you realize I'm better off stopping, getting out of the car, missing a couple more practice runs and cooling off. That way I'm ready to go into qualifying or comp or whatever it is. And I'm not borderline having a heat stroke by the time we get there. And we don't even have to wear race suits at Clutch Kickers. <sighs> I mean, events like the uh, one we won last weekend where we have to wear a race suit, I mean, that's when it gets pretty unbearable. And that's kind of what really led me to the point where I was like, I gotta do something about this. It's only gonna get hotter. Now, a really common setup is a uh, cool shirt system. So basically what it is, is you have a small cooler, you put uh, ice water in it, you have a little pump in there, and then you have a shirt with tubes sewn to it, and it pumps that ice water through those tubes on your shirt and keeps your body core temperature down. And I've thought about getting one of those systems many times in the past, but the problem is the ice. You have to bring multiple bags of ice to a weekend. It's not like one bag of ice is gonna last you the whole event. No, you gotta have multiple bags of ice, which means now you gotta bring a second cooler full of ice to the track, which adds a whole lot to the setup phase because it's not like you can get it a couple days in advance before you head out. You gotta get it the morning of the event. So if you're staying at the track, then you gotta go out and get ice. And it adds that level of complication, not only with the setup, but with running the car as well because the ice only lasts a couple hours. So now pretty much between every session to turn the car around, you gotta pull the cooler out, drain some water out of it, and put fresh ice in it if you want the, to actually do its job. So for me, that's like, that was a big turn off and that's what's kept me from doing it for so long because I, I try to keep the car as turnkey as possible. You know, unless something's going wrong at the event, 
All we gotta do to this car is put fuel in it and change the tires, that's it. And that just makes the whole weekend easier and smoother when you're running by yourself or with a small crew. The other thing is I know myself and I know for fun events, for example, I probably just wouldn't even get ice. I wouldn't wanna deal with it, I wouldn't wanna stop, I'd be running late to the track, whatever the case, and then it wouldn't get used for fun events, it'd just be like half the time I drive the car. It just feel like kind of a waste. So for the longest time, I've wanted one, but I always get, went back to that. I know the reality of it, getting ice every time, having a second cooler, all of that, like I'm not gonna wanna deal with it. So I was talking to Bowman about it one day, our resident uh, drifter who's also a NASCAR driver. He was telling me about something they have in their NASCARs that cools the water down itself and you don't use any ice. And I was like, wait a second, that exists? That's a thing? I'm like, well, it's gotta be expensive that they use it in NASCAR. And the NASCAR ones are expensive. They're like very expensive. So old Benny boy was doing some research. He's good at that. And he managed to find this system, which is a whole lot cheaper than the super fancy NASCAR one, because obviously the NASCAR one's meant to be super wide and whatever, whatever. But it does basically the same thing. And what it does is essentially refrigerate the water that's flowing through your shirt. So instead of using ice to cool the water, it has basically a refrigeration unit that is cooling the water constantly on demand. So instead of having to add water, ice, or anything, it's just got coolant that stays in it, you just turn it on. You just turn it on. No ice, no water, no changing, just turn it on. Now obviously that technology comes at a price. It's more than double the cost of an ice cool shirt system. So, I mean, it's not cheap. But how I was able to justify it to myself was it's designed to be very easy to swap from one car to another. So it's got these pins at the front. You pull those pins out, boom, lift it up out of the bracket, ready to put it in another car. So for a hundred bucks, you can buy the bracket, the wiring and everything that needs to stay with the car for a separate car. And then it'd probably take you two minutes to swap it. It's just two pins, pull it out, boom, pop it in. So that was kind of the big selling point for me because effectively you could have one system for all your cars. So that was really the, the, the way I was able to justify it to myself at least, you know. We're all different on what we're willing to spend money on and what we're not, but for me, this was one of those things, man. I just was like, if this works as good as it's supposed to work, it is literally going to be life-changing. If I can sit in my car during practice for two hours and barely break a sweat, it is going to completely change what events are like for me. And it being so simple, not having to use ice and all that stuff, I'll, I can use it at fun events. I can use it if I'm street driving the car if I want to. So I'm pretty excited about this, as you can tell. Like I, I've i wanted some sort of cool shirt for so long, but the ice thing always just dead ended me and I never did it. But this solves that problem. We get the cool shirt without dealing with the ice. I hope it works as good as it seems like it will. It shouldn't be very hard to install. I did kind of go a little extra. I got the carbon fiber <laughs> face plate because you know, my super lightweight 2,500 pound Miata. We got the remote control, um, but I got it as a kit. Came with the shirt, came with the hoses. Comes with everything we need. So uh, pretty much all we gotta do is install it. Let's get to it. All right, so my original plan was to mount this here. This was if I was ever gonna use like an actual cool shirt, cause they're, uh, it's a lot bigger of a setup than that, the cooler. You could almost still sit here. If I move the fire extinguisher, shove this all the way back here, a passenger could still sit. I don't take passengers that often, so it's not a huge deal, but I have the seat and everything. It's, it's nice to have the ability to take a passenger. Plus there's a lot of heat there on the floorboard from the exhaust and all that stuff. So not, not a great area. Another option would be the trunk but I kind of uh, already have a lot going on in the trunk here. We got the dry sump tank, two fuel filters, fuel surge tank, big battery, kill switch, and it's a Miata trunk. So, I, you know, I'm not surprised it doesn't fit here, but after seeing it in person, I was like, ah, it might, but that's okay, because I think I found an even better option. I think I'm gonna put it back here on the rear deck lid. Now, the reason for that is one, there's a, a good bit of insulation there under the carpet, which will keep everything cool. Two, we're gonna get good airflow through here and out of these ducts. So I think that's gonna be the best place for it. So I'm gonna quit jibber jabber and let's get the uh, roof off and see where we can mount this thing and start getting it put in. So excited to use it. Oh yeah, man, that's it super low too. Okay. Up kind of like right by the roll bar. Probably have to mount it on this side. Pressing out there mowing the lawn. Oh, I need that tool for this.
All right, the hard part's gonna be, man, it is crazy how much heavier the metal bracket is. It's crazy how light this thing is without the bracket on it. Uh, hard part's gonna be trying to match the holes here in the carpet. Oh, I got an idea, make it easy. So I put some bolts in the mounting hole. So we should be able to feel them through the carpet and cut some little slots. Some people are probably surprised I still have carpet and sound deadening in this car. It just makes the car so much more comfortable and it's, it's really not that much weight. I got the cooler mounted up, nice and secure. So what we need to do is the main wiring, which plugs in here. Um, so we're gonna have to drill a hole, pop it down through here. Over to the battery, we need to run a relay. So we need to run a wire up from our main wiring up there to basically just turn it on when the ignition's turned on. Just that way there's no power going to it when the car is off. And then we have our remote control, which I'm glad I got this. So I got this originally because I didn't realize <laughs> that it had buttons on it and that's how you control it, which if I mounted it there, I could easily reach those. And I almost tried to cancel that part of the order, but I was like, ah, whatever. It'll be nice to have it closer to the driver. But now that I mounted it back there, works out. Works out way better. So the remote control will allow us to turn it on, off, eco, and our temperature. And look at this, it'll fit perfect in this little slot, which is so satisfying because there's nothing there. It's always been blank. Put that there, run this back to the cooler. And that's pretty much it, besides the hoses. Ta-da! Reinstall. That was perfect. I can easily reach it. Ta-da! Oh, it's so sick. Well, it's all wired now, um, but I'm waiting on the connector for the shirt. So the shirt doesn't come with a connector, which you need, which I find kind of silly, you know, whatever. But the kit I ordered did come with the connector, but since it got, ended up getting drop shipped, it, I missed, I didn't get it. It didn't end up getting shipped. So I'm missing that and breakaway coupling. So uh, I overnighted it. <laughs> I overnighted a connector so that I would have it tomorrow so I can test this thing out. I've been so excited to put this in and try it out. I can't wait any longer. So anyway, it'll be here tomorrow. Um, that's pretty much a wrap for now. Ah, excitement. All right, we finally got our connector in. All right, I got our hoses cut to length. We can always shorten them later if we find this is too long. Uh, we're gonna put, it comes with this Chinese finger trap stuff, like typical wire loom. All right, short cord done. Shirt's done. So now all we need to do is fill the system with coolant, bleed it, hook the shirt up, cycle it, use it basically. But before we do that, I have something I need to check and it's gonna be a lot easier without the uh, engine warm, which the engine's gonna get warm because they're gonna run the car while that's on because it does draw a decent amount of current. We're not gonna want it sitting there for 
10, 20, 30 minutes uh, with the car off, ideally. All right, so what I wanna do real quick is pressure test the cooling system. So we're losing coolant uh, just slowly, um, probably half a quarter a day at an event, I would say. It, it's been kind of a nuisance and I've just been like putting it off. I think we might need to rebuild the expansion tank. This is the very first aluminum fab project I did. I blew it apart and re-welded it along the seam here. I was sending her a little too hard at the old Freedom Factory, got her hot and just blew it apart right at the seam. So I wanna rebuild this at some point anyway. We're in a bit of a time crunch before this weekend, so if I don't have to, if that's not the problem, I'll probably leave it. Either way, I wanna find out where this mysterious coolant leak is, is from, cause it's kind of annoying me at this point. Put it off for far too long. So we're gonna undo it at the steam port here. I'm gonna cap that. Yeah, this Earl's pressure tester kit is something I wish I had got a long, long time ago. Cause you can pressure test anything that's AN. So I don't have AN lines you know, big AN where it goes onto the expansion tank. I have MPT, so I can use normal rubber hoses. I didn't want to have to weld fittings on the water pump. All right, we should be good. Anyway, I use this line. What the hell? Is it the cap? Yeah. I think it was just the cap, guys. Cause I mean, it was gushing out as soon as I put any bit of pressure into it. Yeah, no, it was 100% the cap. We just put a bunch of air into the top of the system, obviously. So we'll need to fix that. I really believe this, but hey, we might not have to rebuild this expansion tank after all. At least not yet. Well, it must've just been building up pressure just enough, which apparently is virtually nothing and just letting it out the cap. It was probably just evaporating off the tank because I never see a leak, you know, but it was slow, so cool. All right, back to the task at hand. I pre-mixed our coolant solution, so it uses a coolant um, and then distilled water. So it's two parts coolant to one part distilled water. Oh, we got it. All right, now we're gonna put it back in the car, turn it on, let it uh, prime and cool down, then we'll hook the shirt up, fill the system up the rest of the way, see if it works. Right, should get power. I assume that's... temperature we got it set down at like 35 degrees and the temperature is dropping it was like whatever ambient is 90 something when it started so we're just gonna let it cool down I don't think we have to let it go completely all the way then we're gonna plug our shirt in it'll fill that up we'll have to refill the reservoir and then we're done and then everything stays primed and it's like dry dry disconnectable Everything works. I let it get down to 52 um, and it was still cooling down. So I'm pretty sure it'd go even lower than that. And it is, it's hot today. Let me look at the temperature. It's gotta be about 90, let's see. 91 degrees. Granted we're in the shade, but still, uh, it's funny. So there's an eco mode you know, where it uses less power. Maybe you needed it or it wasn't that hot, whatever. Anyway, there's an eco mode you can turn on. So it got down to about 70 degrees and it just wasn't cooling down anymore. And I was like, man, I really hope this isn't it. That would suck, like, because I felt it. I'm like, it's cool, but it's not, you know, it's noticeable, it's not that crazy. But anyway, it was in eco mode. As soon as I turned it into like the max power mode, it just poof, tempt, plummeted. And it's cool because this is their newest one. The old ones didn't have this. To pre-cool it, you'd have to either like hook up a loop yourself or, you know, hook up everything. But this one, if it senses where it gets to the end and can't go anymore, it starts looping internally, the coolant. So it's still cooling, 
the coolant. So you can, let's say five, 10 minutes before the session, boom, turn it on or while, even while the car's warming up, have it cooling down. So by the time you get in and hook up, the water's already chilled down to, you know, 40, 45 degrees. So I'm pretty excited to use it. Obviously just sitting here in the shade, it's not a super practical use of it. But yeah, no, I mean, dude, I can't, I, I'm happy with it. I can't wait to use it during a long session because, you know, it's going to have more time to just sit there and cool. Uh, but one of the reasons I stopped, I think we have this freaking door, dude. I think we have a exhaust leak on this side. So I noticed the wide band was reading lean towards the end of last event, which was kind of odd. And then the car was getting kind of a sputter and part throttle, ran good wide open. I think what that was, I think that could be, we have a exhaust leak before our wide band, so our wide band is reading lean. Potential guess, I don't know. We gotta get this thing back up in the air and check it out. We do have another problem to deal with though. So I noticed in one of the videos, I had the camera facing back at me and the seat was moving, which you can see it's moving. So I was like, oh, okay, bolt's probably loose. Well, bolt's not loose. Foreboard is like ripped. So we're gonna have to weld in some reinforcements. We'll probably just do it for both of the back bolt holes just so it's solid and we don't end up ripping the other side out too. So moral of the story is cooling system is done. We'll probably play with it a little bit later, but for now we got more work to do. We're gonna get this thing back up on the lift and uh, try to sort it out. <laughs> This is poor car, man. It's so filthy. Hmm. Oh. Well, that would explain it. Our flex joints busted. All right, well, that, that makes sense. Like just hearing it idle, I was like, man, it sounds like there's a massive exhaust leak down here. Should also explain it because our O2 sensor is in this bank. So just getting uh, more clean air than it actually is. So it's reading lean and then the ECU is gonna start adjusting to that and the car is gonna start running different because it's gonna think it needs more fuel than it does. So we'll have to probably go back and clear our learn maps because I would assume this happened not just right now, you know? So we gotta fix it, obviously, before this weekend. So I gotta see if I can get another one of these, like, ASAP. At least it's light, because it's titanium. Yo, that ain't right. I think we can weld this from the inside. At least to get us by for this one event, I don't think we really have time to re-engineer the exhaust right this second. So here's my last repair actually. Hit the diff bolt and bash it in and split it open. So I welded that back and it's, it's held up. It's just, it, you know, it's clearance now. <laughs> I've got this thing wedged in here. Dude, having the fixture table, whew, Life change. I'm gonna try to tack it from the outside. So I've got a little tiny 1 16th electrode that just barely fits in here. The rod just barely fits in here. I'm hoping I can get a couple tacks on it just so it's in position enough for me to take this out and then get in there and weld it. So definitely not gonna be easy, but uh, we're gonna give it a shot here. I couldn't get down in there, but I was able to go between the flex joint part. All right, well, I wanna test fit it back up in there before we weld it the rest of the way. It might end up having to weld it on the outside, we'll see. It's just a short term fix anyway, but I wanna get it back up in there and just make sure it's still gonna fit.
weld it back together now. Oh, this one's cracked too, bro. For real? <laughs> this one's split almost all, like at least halfway around. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking, dude. Come on, man. What is this? Well, I guess we get to weld this one too. All right, well, we got both of them welded up. Uh, it came out decent, dude. Titanium's actually surprisingly easy to weld. Like, it welds like butter. It's so, it's so effortless. I obviously wasn't trying to make these look super pretty because one, it's an awkward thing to weld. Two, we're gonna be taking them off because like I said, the guy I talked to at Tycon said that these flex joints just break. So instead of spending $300 on buying two new ones, that'll break in, I mean, I think, how long have I had the exhaust? Five, six events, something like that. We're gonna try to redesign it to a little more robust design that will hopefully last longer. But it does go back to what I was saying at the beginning of this video, how these cars at this level of abuse and power and grip, they just need maintenance. Things break, like things just wear out over time. And it's no just one individual thing. It's not like you finish the car and it's just done. Like the abuse takes its toll and you have to stay on top of it. I mean, I almost didn't notice that. I was just idling it while the cool shirt thing was going down. I'm like, man, it really sounds like I got a slight exhaust leak. More than slight. Okay, I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering. Try to throw this thing back in. Hopefully it still fits. That's why I tried to check it a couple times so I didn't weld it up in some awkward position. But I mean, we still have flex in the joints so we should be able to get it on. But yeah, once it's back on, we can actually move on to the project that we had planned to do. Which actually, this was a bonus, obviously, project. Wasn't planning on doing this. But the other project's a bonus project too. We we're just full of surprises. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get back to work. exhaust is back on we are back in business so i do want to redo this back half I, we're going to redo the front i gotta decide if i want to order this stuff to redo this i want to split it off and tuck it up between the bushing and the subframe here because if i put it up there i don't have to worry about it smashing into the diff bolt and i can probably get the whole thing up two inches higher which would be good because then only the diff would hit the ground not the exhaust. So I just gotta decide if when I redo those, if I wanna go ahead and do that as well. Okay, jibber jabber, jibber jabber, jabber jibber. Uh, you can see that our seat mount bolt, <laughs> that's pretty bad, dude. That's honestly pretty bad. So we're gonna have to plate over that. All right, just quick and dirty uh, plate bracing there. I had to stitch weld them because the carpet's still in. So without pulling the interior, entire interior out, I can't weld them all the way around. Otherwise it's just gonna set on fire. So eh, best we could without going down the rabbit hole of pulling the interior out because after this season, I do plan to take the interior out and redo a lot of things on this car. Either that or we're building another car. So either way, it's gonna get fixed up after this season, it's just, it's tough to make time in between rounds and all the other events going on. So we're just trying to patch the old girl together for now, but it came out all right. And I think that'll be plenty strong enough to get the job done. I mean, the seat was holding on with the floor almost completely ripped out. So I think it'll be all right. Got that done and out of the way. Now I won't be flopping around in the seat. You don't even notice it uh, when you're driving. That's the funny part. I only noticed it watching the video, seeing myself move, but yeah, I mean, I don't notice it. Silly. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the cooling system and while it's running anyway, I wanna go ahead and cool this thing down again. Just, 
you know, just try it out again. Can't help it. Also, you can see it was full lean before. Now we're 12, we're very rich. It was already 1920 air fuels before. All right, everything seems good. The shirt cooled down super quick. I was curious, because it's still, at least the water temp was 89 degrees. And before the car was even up to temp, it was cooled down to 33, which like the max setting is 35. Um, when I hooked up, obviously my body temperature in the warmer water in the shirt and the wine increased it to like 55, but it felt so good. <laughs> The only thing that's lacking is like the shirt's a little loose on me, so I kind of have to like push the tubes to myself. But when I'm strapped into the car, that won't matter. So super cool. You do gleek a little bit of water whenever you disconnect the fittings. I did notice that. But it's cool that you can turn it on, let it cool down while the car is warming up and then plug in with it already cool. Like that's pretty sweet. Oh, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be like life changing to be reasonably cool in the car and not pouring sweat and feeling like I'm gonna die the whole time. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the roof back on this thing. I'm gonna go through and nut and bolt it and just make sure everything is done and dusted and good to go. Uh, we got some stuff to knock out on the truck as well. So nothing nothing too crazy. So I think we'll just go ahead and end it here. I'm gonna quit your I'm gonna see you guys later. Go get something done. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.